So, so very quickly, that's the overview of the three key elements of the decommissioning plan at this time. There were a couple of questions I was asked to address. Yeah. So, uh, Dan, do you want to ask a question right now? Or? Um, if I may, real quick. Go ahead. <clears throat> um, actually, two questions, Tom. One of them relates actually to our last meeting. And a question or comment came up about the Native Americans and their input in this process. Uh, could you uh, give us some discussion on that, please? Sure, and, and I've got my notes at my, my seat, but basically uh, in 2016 there were several outreach efforts to Native Americans. One by the company, we have a full-time liaison that works with, with tribes in the area, so we made our own outreach efforts to potentially affected tribes to inform them of the decommissioning plans and solicit their input, make them aware of their opportunities. Likewise, the California State Lands Commission has a requirement to notify uh, uh, a number of tribes which they executed in 2016. So there's a long list of tribes they were provided a name, I think, uh, I want to say North American Indian Heritage Foundation, I may have the name wrong, were provided a list to the State Lands Commission in July of 2016 and they notified them of the start of the CEQA process. So what I'd suggest is I can post this in its entirety on the website so the, 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 all the details there. But yes, we confirmed there was outreach both by Edison as well as the State Lands Commission. Hi, my name is Charles Langley. I'm with Public Watchdogs, and I would like to cede my time, uh, Mr. Palmasano, to Angela Mooney DRC from the Juan Nino Band of the Ahashiman Nation. Hi, everybody. Thank you. I'm here on behalf of Sacred Places Institute for Indigenous Peoples. I live in LA, so it took me a billion hours to get here. And um, I wasn't here at the beginning of the meeting, but I'm told that someone said that the Native nations for whom this area is significant have been consulted, and that's actually not the case. I was on the phone with the attorney for San Luis Rey Nation earlier today, and I was just at the house of the tribal manager for the Wanania Band of Mission Indians Ahashima Nation, and I have these letters here today um, from them, and also a letter from Sacred Places Institute requesting uh, government to government consultation with the appropriate bodies. So clearly, if that consultation had happened, if any sort of meaningful outreach had happened, then I wouldn't be standing here with letters signed by these Native nations requesting government to government consultation. Additionally, I do just want to highlight the fact that um, while um, recent our Western archaeological science dates are um, existence here at about 15,000 years. You may be aware that there was a recent report from National Geographic that just came out a couple weeks ago that um, found uh, human etchings on mammoth bones that then places our time here at about 150,000 years. And so specifically when you're talking about something like nuclear waste storage, I, 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 it behooves you to engage with the only people here in this place that have an extensive period of time here that post-dates the amount of time that that nuclear waste is going to be harmful, right? You need to engage with and consult with the local Native nations, and it's just shameful that despite the fact that these governments have been in existence for thousands and thousands of years, there's no representation of either Hashiman or San Luis Rey Luceno people on the community engagement panel. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.